Hi guys, you join me with a bit of an update and a bit of an upgrade I'm going to be doing. So the first bit of this update is, hey look, I've got a bezel for my 1000, except it's a 3000i thing, that's because I also have a 3000. Anyway, ignoring that, as you can see, this machine, it's off. This machine, it's off. This machine, you haven't seen, but it's also off. This is a Dell PowerEdge R720, and this is actually my main hypervisor. I haven't run either of these two for uh, two months now, most probably, because I've been entirely on this one. Um, I've even not been using this disk shelf. I'm using uh, a couple of one terabyte drives I have in this machine. But, uh, actually, anyway, quick rough specs anyway. It's got an E5 2620V2, so I believe that's a 2.1 gigahertz six core with hyperthreading, so 12 threads. Um, it's got 96 gigs of RAM in it currently. However, it's only got one CPU. Yes, the six core is low power, but it's not quite fast enough. So I've gotten some upgrades for it, uh, which I'm gonna be putting in, and it's gonna have two CPUs by the end of this. So yeah, let's get started on that. So this is the inside of the uh, R720. Got a 10 gig NIC, it's a Intel X520 DA2. Uh, so yeah, six fans across the front, all hot swappable, this nice little baffle, riser cards, there's something like, I believe there's three PCI by eight electrically, although I think there's 16 slots here, half height ones. And then there's two more here and two more here, and the combination of by, by 16 and all this. These can support GPUs, these particular two right here, hence these additional power things. I do actually have a power cable for a GPU, however, I need to test it. Apparently you can't use a GPU in this system unless you have two 1100 watt power supplies, whilst this system I have has a, uh, two 750 watts. So hey, then anyway, under the lovely air baffle, You'll see I've got one CPU fully populated with 8 gig DIM, so 96 gigs of RAM in total. And then there's an air baffle over this and blah 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 blah. All of this is coming out because I'm going to be installing another CPU as well as replacing this CPU. And yes, let's have fun with that. So I went on eBay and picked up two of these mysterious boxes. Both of them are sealed, which is very interesting. Direct from Cisco apparently, but someone's selling them super cheap on eBay. These are 2.8 GHz E5 2680V2s, and these are 10 core processors, so I'm putting two 10 cores in, hyper threading, 40 threads in total, and doubling the RAM. This is pretty interesting. Let me just uh, open this up, because what's in here is pretty strange. Um, <laughs> this is a thing that always makes me laugh with Cisco, is they put where things have come from on the labels, so like, this part's coming from China, China, USA, 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 and Taiwan, and the document is USA. Um, I'm surprised they don't put where the box came from, most probably China. Oh, let's slice it open and have a look, because there's a lot more than just a processor in here, and some of it is pretty cool. So having run a knife through the sticker, I can now open it and reveal documentation. Oh god, I need two hands for that. So we got a lovely slip of paper saying something. Um, Yep. Okay. Installing CPUs. This has a, a very interesting page in it. Uh, if I can unfold it with one hand. <laughs> in regards to the amount of thermal paste, you should apparently stick. Oh God, I should really have uh, unfolded this. On an LGA 2011 CPU, you should apparently stick that much in there. So a nice cross with additional dots and use half the syringes. Anyway. Ignoring this for a second, what else is in the box? We have two microfiber cloths, which is pretty interesting. We've got a, they're both lens clearing. Interestingly, the other box has a grey one and a yellow one. Um, don't really know. I imagine one's for cleaning the old CPU, one's for cleaning the heatsink. But what else is in the box? Thermal paste. Interestingly, Cisco give you two tubes of it, however one tube is for one type of system and the other is for a different one, which is a bit strange, but as far as I'm aware this is just Arctic Silver. Um, I prefer to use MX, but I'm actually going to use what Cisco recommend. 
for one, and well, what they've provided, see how it works. Interestingly, Cisco, according to this pattern, says you'll use half the tube. Anyway, other than that, we have this lovely doodad that I'll get to, and some cleaning stuff. So, thermal material remover and thermal surface purifier. Ooh. And then this other bit of plastic and blah 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 blah. Somewhere hidden in here is the actual CPU. So in bag number one of these plastic things is this interesting bit of plastic, whilst in the other is this other interesting piece of plastic. Now, I've never actually got my hands on one of these. Um, this is a pick and place for the 2011 CPUs. So what you do is you get your lovely processor, in this case if we can read the name on it, there we go, E5 2680 V2s, brand new, never been in a system. So. However many years after they were made, I think these were what, quarter, quarter three, 2013? So five years later down the road, it's finally going in the system. But yeah, this lovely pick and place, you uh, check that it's open, which it looks like it is. You place it over the CPU, aligning all of the green triangles and all this. And Sorry if I'm not pointing in the right direction, I'm trying to see what I'm doing. And then you push this down and you can pick up the CPU. And there's all 2011 pins. If I put it back down, you just click it again and it drops it. That's how you get in the socket without risking damaging the uh, socket, apparently. And I think this is the most amusing thing I've ever seen for a CPU. Um, but oh well, let's try and use it, I guess. So this is the CPU coming out. Let's see if I can read, get that on camera. There you go, the Intel Xeon E5 2620 V2 2.1 GHz Hexacore processor. Let's get this out. Um, so, LGA2011 is a dual bar sort of locking mechanism. It can only come undone one way, and it can only go back together the other way. So essentially you start with locking mechanism number one to unlock, and you lift it, and what this does is it actually then allows this one to be unlocked and moved out of the way which then releases the entire thing, you flip this one out if you then push this down some people don't know you should do this or don't think you should do this but if you push it down it lifts the retention bracket back up and there you go, you can then grab your socketed CPU I won't bother with the tool to take this one out but, and there's all the pins, there's the CPU and away we go now to give the amusing tool a whirl, got the CPU picked up, we look for the triangle on the board and socket, which I believe is definitely this bottom corner, hence the various white markers, but let me just double check, yeah, I'm going to go with yes, you know what, we can easily just compare it to the other one, yes, it is the bottom right corner, so apparently we just drop this down, Oh, this feels really weird using a tool. And that's in the right place, apparently. You click it. Hey! If you give it a quick... Yeah, definitely in there. That is <laughs> that is a really cool little bit of plastic. And definitely takes a lot of risk work out of uh, someone potentially dropping the CPU into the socket. And so, down with two, and then down with one. And away we go. And I'll do the second processor now. When you've got a socket that's still got this blanket plate in, for anything past LGA 2011 and like LGA 1155, I think this is the same for 1156 which is a really old socket at this point, um, don't remove this. Do not remove this. Um, I'll show you why, because if I lift this up, blah blah blah, I get my processor and I line it up, Ooh, come on, and I drop it in the socket. When I push this back down now, well, as I push this back down, when I grab two, you will see it pops off by itself. There is no point in grabbing it and potentially damaging the socket, I'm not even pointing at the socket, by pulling this out, because you don't know. You might pull it out, your finger might slip, you might ram it into the socket. There's no point in risking it because this will pop off once the CPU is installed. 
and it would help if I could pause. Oh, blunders. So there we go. Both CPUs in, all the more RAM in. So we have in this system now 20 cores, 40 threads, 192 gigs of RAM. Yes, that is correct maths. 10 gig NIC, blah, blah, blah. Let's see how this runs. And uh, let's put everything back together, fire it up, and see what Proxmox sees. So after that we can see Proxmox is booted, and this is the Kongu node, which is the one I upgraded. 40 CPUs, that includes the hyper-threading. Um, I've got all my VMs running and I'm hardly putting anything on it. Because um, I still need to get everything fired up. Well, I still need to get more stuff fired up and the application is running. But as you can see, 40 times E5 2680 V2s. 188 gigs of RAM because maths and how memory works and uh, yeah that's a, that's a hell of a machine now so yeah thanks for uh, watching if you liked it give it a like uh, other than that I'll catch you in the next one bye